Hello and thank you for joining us. So far in the study of functions, we have done a lot of work to understand the different families of functions. Today, we are going to learn how to sketch linear and quadratic functions. But before we do that, let us recap the main features of the linear and quadratic functions. The linear function is represented by a straight line, and we define the function y equals x as the parent graph of the functions with an equation y equals ax plus q. The quadratic function is represented by a parabola. We define the parent parabola as y equals x squared for the family of quadratic functions. We also know how each of these parent graphs is affected by changes in the a value and the q value in their formulae. When we increase the a value, it causes the straight line to stretch vertically away from the x-axis by a factor of a. And it has the same effect on the parabola. Decreasing the a value has the opposite effect on these graphs. For an a value between 0 and 1, the parent graph of the straight line moves closer to the x-axis. And the parabola also moves closer. Making the a value negative causes the parent graphs of the straight lines to reflect about the x-axis. And the parabola also reflects about the x-axis. So, straight line and parabola graphs pull away from the x-axis for a values between negative 1 and 0. In other words, where a values are greater than negative 1 and smaller than 0. But for a values less than 1, the reflected graphs stretch vertically away from the x-axis. This effect can be seen by both the negative parent linear graph and the negative parent quadratic functions. So far, so good, I'm sure. Now remember, there's also the Q value. Let's check the effect of changing the Q values of the straight line and parabola functions. When we make changes to the Q value in the parent graph of the linear function, the graph shifts vertically up by Q units for positive Q values. It shifts vertically down by Q units for negative Q values. We see the same change in the parent parabola graph when we make the Q value positive or negative. The parabola shifts vertically up by Q units when Q is positive and vertically down by Q units when Q is negative. Now let's look at what the straight line graph and the parabola have in common. Can you think of anything? I'm sure you can see that the straight line graph and the parabola have y-intercepts that are equal to their Q values. These values are also their y-intercepts. For example, this parabola has a Q value of 2, and this line graph has a Q value of negative 2. And don't forget the parabola has a turning point at the Q value, and the graph of a straight line has a y-intercept that is equal to Q. Okay, by now I think you're ready to describe and sketch the changes in the graphs brought about by changes in the a and q values for these functions. Let's use this example. Sketch the graphs of the linear function y is equal to 3x minus 4, and the quadratic functions y is equal to x squared minus 4. We'll start with the graph of the linear function. We know that the parent graph of this function is y is equal to x. From the equation, we can see that the new graph has an a value of positive 3. This means the new graph will stretch vertically away from the x-axis. The next thing we can see is that the new graph has a q value of negative 4. This means the graph will move vertically down by 4 units. In other words, the new graph will have a y-intercept of negative 4. Can you see anything missing? Whenever we sketch the graph of a straight line, we also need to put down the point where the straight line cuts the x-axis. This point is called the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, use the equation of the linear function that you want to sketch, which is y is equal to 3x minus 4. 
set the y value in the equation to 0. In other words, substitute 0 in the place of y. Now solve the equation for x. We've calculated that x is equal to 4 over 3. Now all that's left to do is to put the value of the x-intercept on the graph. Um, that makes the graph look and feel complete. To sketch the equation of the quadratic function, we need the following. 1. The turning point of the graph. In grade 10, this will always correspond with the y-intercept of the quadratic function. 2 the x-intercepts of the graph. And three, we need to know if the graph is facing with its arms upward or downward. Remember the question told us that y is equal to x squared minus four. The equation immediately tells us the graph will have arms facing upward because the a value of the graph is positive one and a positive a value always means happy face. Also, this a value is the same as the parent graph, so it remains the same distance from the x-axis as the parent graph. Secondly, the graph will have a turning point that is also its y-intercept at the point 0, negative 4. We can see this from the q-value of the function. To find the x-intercepts of the parabola, we set y equal to 0, just as we did with the linear function. But in this case, a quadratic equation remains. Hope you remember how to solve for x in quadratic equations. We start by making y equal to 0. x squared minus 4 can be factorized to x minus 2, x plus 2. To find the two intercepts, we make each bracket equal to 0. Now let's solve for x. x is equal to 2 and x is equal to negative 2. This means that our x-intercepts are 2, 0, and negative 2, 0. The points negative 2, 0, 0, negative 4, 2, 0 are plotted and the curved quadratic function is drawn through the points. We'll try one more to make sure you've got it. Sketch the graph of y equals negative a half x minus 3 and y equals negative 2x squared plus 4. The graph of the straight line has an a value of a negative half. So this line is pulled closer to the x-axis and in the same direction as the negative parent line graph. The q value indicates that the line has a y-intercept of negative 3. Finally, to obtain the x-intercept, set y equal to 0 and solve for x. 3 is equal to negative half times x. 6 is equal to negative x, which means that negative 6 is equal to x. This means that the x-intercept is negative 6, 0. So the graph looks like this, with it intersecting x at negative 6. Now we'll use y is equal to negative 2x squared plus 4. The graph of this parabola has arms pointing downward because the a value is negative. The graph is pulled away from the x-axis and has a turning point at positive 4. To calculate the x-intercepts of the graph, we start by making y equal to 0. Usually we would factorize a quadratic equation, but I can see that x is going to have irrational roots, so let's solve it like a linear equation. Negative 4 is equal to negative 2x squared. 2 is equal to x squared and plus or minus square root of 2 is equal to x. Remember that whenever we square root a number, there are always two possible answers one positive and one negative. The x-intercepts are square root of 2, 0 and negative square root of 2, 0. This gives us a graph that looks like this. Well done grade 10s, now you know how to sketch linear and quadratic functions. Remember to watch the functions task video for more practice questions. Goodbye.